What's up, everyone, and welcome to Lesson with John. Yes, that's the new series. Uh, that's the new two. name of that series. I just made it up. I uploaded a video of us doing a sweeping exercise, and a lot of people enjoy that. So we're going to continue to do this. You have a couple of different uh, uh, exercises yeah, so that we are going to do. This exercise we're doing today is going to be available as a guitar profile in the description of this video, so you can practice it yourself. But basically, this is John teaching me Guitar technique, yeah. basically. Basically. So, what are we doing today, John? Uh, picking an exercise that will also help you see the the scale on the neck and work on the synchronization, and you can also use it in like improv as well. Because the whole idea of the exercise is to take this basic pattern, and then you can either move it one step to the right in the scale and keep going like that, or it can go move it to the left instead. So okay. right or left, so you have that choice on every string and then you can string them together. Whatever, right? Okay. So the idea is just treat it as like Lego blocks uh, that you can string together so you can make up your own fast licks. Basically. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Let's go. All right, so we start on the fifth fret and we're gonna do this in, in A minor slash C major now. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna start on the fifth fret and we're gonna start with five, seven, eight. Good. And then, so success. The, yes. And then, then and we, this is strict alternate picking. Strict alternate okay. picking. So you're gonna start there, and then it's gonna be eight notes. So we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So basically two groups of four. Okay. So the first group would be, and second group. So that's the basic group. Just practice that, and then since we ended up on E here. And we're going to go to the right on this actual string. Mm -hmm. uh, after E comes... F? Yeah, good. We're going to move up to F. <laughs> so... Oh, okay. Yes. So I move up the, the exactly. thing. Exactly. Yeah, okay. so, and, and if you were in, say, E minor, now instead of A minor, you would go... Exactly. Up, up to F sharp uh, instead of F. So it's uh, totally dependent on what scale you're playing. Then you just continue doing the same pattern uh, on each string group. So now we're going to start from F and go F, G, A, and then back, and then we have E, D, C on the G string. Yeah. Whoops. Oh. Yes. Yes, and now move that up one step to the right. Uh, yeah, exactly. So it's okay. pretty easy once you start understanding the pattern because right. you actually play the note you're moving to yes. when you move to the right, that is. So you have already played that, mm -hmm. just move up with the index finger, up with the index finger. Uh. Yes, and then move up to... to yeah, so when, when you practice this initially, it's a good idea to go from uh, one downbeat to another. And okay. actually, since we're doing 16th notes here, four notes per beat, it's gonna be like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So every okay. other beat's gonna be this shift. Yes. Yes. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and More coffee, sorry, yeah, my brain's exactly. just bad. <laughs> and the thing is though, I see a lot of, uh, students do this when they practice something, they, and this is one of like, the practice strategies you can apply, uh, apply to pretty much anything you're doing. If you have something like uh, a bar of 4-4, four, four, so 1, 2, 3, 4, mm -hmm. uh, you want to play the phrase that starts on, on beat 1, mm -hmm. and then you want to end on beat 2. Because if, if you only practice this part, yes. and then you practice this part, and this, you never get to practice the actual transition. Yes. So that's super important. So we'll okay. get in the habit of doing that right away when you learn it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's really important though, to get the, each sound together. Yes, and then next one. Or exactly. like that, right? Yep. Oh. Mm -hmm. And then this one. Almost. Good, and then the last one. Oh! Yes, and now we're gonna move to the left instead. So okay. we're gonna go. Okay. And that's why we want to do this is we want to make it to a big repeating exercise, basically. Yes. So that's the descending part. Uh, 
Uh, and then the ascending part is going to be a new pattern, still an eight note pattern, uh, but a new one. So uh, basically going to go up. Yes, and then you add, now I have six notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then yeah. seven, eight. Yeah, so now again we have the choice of going to the right or we can go to the left. And okay. we're going to go to the left in this case. Okay. Nice, and then... Right note, but wrong place, so... <laughs> and finally... Yes. Yeah, now okay. finally we're going to go... Yes. And we start over. Exactly. Okay. So, so the idea then is to play through it. Okay. And trying to remain relaxed. And you definitely don't have to play that, you know, any type of tempo that you're not comfortable with because right. that's just a bad idea. So take it as slow as you need to because that's how you really, you know, improve your technique in the long run. Yes. Uh, the way to practice this then uh, is to, uh, since we're, we're doing this with four notes per beat, mm -hmm. which means you can accent uh, the first sixteenth note, mm -hmm. the second, the third, and the fourth. You want to put an accent on one first. So you go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. And go on like that okay. throughout the whole thing. So even, you know, the whole looping thing. Oh. Ah. Okay. Yeah. And then you go through the entire thing like that. Yes. But then you, then you uh, accent uh, the second note. So you go one, two, three, four, one, mm. two, three, four. Okay. And I would suggest that you do this without a metronome first mm -hmm. and simply count. So you, your tempo might, you know, go yep. up and down a bit, but that's fine. Uh, but make sure that your foot is on one the whole time, so you get the feel okay. of it. So you get like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Yeah. And as you can see, I'm accenting the with an upstroke here since yep. that's yeah. So, but but it's pretty easy with this one though because the the pattern is so predictable. So yes. once you see the accent in one group, it's going to be the same place with a different fingering. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, the, so the actual contour of the of the thing is the same. Uh, so then you go through the entire thing with accenting the third and the fourth, mm -hmm. and that really helps you sync if you do it correctly. But when you actually do this, you don't want to do any kind of accent that makes your technique okay, different. Okay. Right? No, no, no. So I'd rather kind of think of it like uh, if your dynamic level is here normally when you play, mm -hmm. put the general level a bit lower, and then make the accent okay. be when you get up to the normal level again. And also you want to try to really feel the connection between the note you're accenting, you know, the left and the right hand, a bit extra. Mm -hmm. So you actually feel like, I can really feel the, whatever finger I'm on, on the second mm -hmm. uh, uh, accent here, I can feel it connect even more with the upstroke than I normally do. Yes, right? exactly. So that's going to really help you sync. Yeah. And you will say like, well, you know, I can't play this fast at all. And no, you can't. Then that's not the point. The, no. the point is not to get this up to like, you know, no. any type of ridiculous tempo. It's, it's all about actually keeping your tempo down and really feeling that. Yeah. Uh, Synchronization, and, uh, that's, and that's a that's a general exercise for me, like just warming up for a gig. It's just yeah. like sitting like this, uh, even playing yeah. slow. Because yeah, yeah, I yeah. mean, if I play that for half an hour, mm -hmm. my sync is going to be incredible mm -hmm. for my gig, basically. Yeah. So I can practice pra patterns like that, but I'm not doing it for the speed. I'm just doing it for the sync. Yeah. Obviously, maybe it's also because I can't play fast. <laughs> well, you can, but but it's it's like I think the biggest problem for for most guitar players, at least the, you know a lot of people that come to me, it's not. That they don't practice, or that you know, yeah. it's generally that they 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 try going, you know, going for it too much. So yeah. they, they spend most of the time like, yeah, 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 and then hoping that yeah, someday when I've done my you know, it will sink. Yeah, someday. exactly. It will just magically happen, but mm -hmm. nothing works like that. And I, I usually give like the example of tie, learning to tie your shoelaces. Mm -hmm. You have to start slow. You can't like. 
no, when you no, do that. No. But then, then eventually, when you've done that like a, you know, hundred times or something, mm -hmm. you can actually tighten much faster without even thinking about it. Right. But you didn't have to sit there with a metronome and push the speed to yeah. get there. But there's also people saying that you also have to practice playing fast, like just to you know get accustomed to. You know, you, you just well, yeah, yeah. because like in karate, for instance. Yeah. I mean, there's first you practice just hitting as, as quick as you can, mm -hmm. and then you work on the technique. Yeah, well, you don't I, believe in that, or well, yeah, I do, but but I think the ratios are wrong. Okay, for, in my experience, mm -hmm. with a lot of people, they they, they do they overdo. The yeah, they do part ninety percent and, fast, and, they don't and then the like no, no, they, they do ten percent of like the slow part instead yeah. of the other way around. Okay. So and I think that's mostly the problem for a lot of people mm -hmm. because, you know. Impatience and whatever. So, of course. so of that, course. that's a thing. But to to end up, you know, to finish this one, uh, what you want to do now, and this is a really good way of learning the neck. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, now we're in C major, so it's all all white notes, so to speak, on mm -hmm. the piano. Uh, so what you want to do is start on each note of the scale and play the sequence like like this basically so I can start the lowest position I can start in is the G here so I'm gonna go play exactly the same sequence mm -hmm. but I'm gonna start at a different scale degree so, so now on D here so I have to go up to E C A F then down to B instead of C in okay. the previous one yep. and good idea then is to go through each starting point mm -hmm. and play play it with uh, an accent on one, yep. two, three, and four. Okay. So that's uh, so four times in each position, basically. Right. And if you have a 24 fret guitar, you can go, uh, you can play G, A, B, C, D, E, F, and then the final G as well, because then basically you can end up here. Right. So you're actually covering the entire neck. Yeah. And that's really, really helpful. But but again. You might feel like, oh, it's really hard to pick fast up here, yeah. you know. But the point is, if you practice that, if you ever have to play that in, a, you know, learn a solo or whatever, or mm -hmm. you write something where you need to be up here, yeah. it's gonna be really uh, annoying if you haven't ever practiced up no. here because it's hard. That's that's true. Yeah. So that's it's true. better to to do it. Now you don't need to spend a lot of time. You just play the exercise four times, yeah. here, and then you're gonna. You that's know, usually me. I'm I'm right about here. And yeah. Right, stop somewhere here, <laughs> yeah. like up here. I never play over here yeah. that often. So yeah. yeah, that's a good tip. So, yeah, so that, that's a, that's an important point, I think, and yeah. also because uh, the guitar is so uh, it's such a different intention here yeah. than it's up here. So yes. Just because you can play something fast here or here, exactly. doesn't mean that auto automatically you can play it all over. That's the place. also a trick uh, that I u utilize is mm -hmm. that if if I want to get better tension, it's just move the picking hand a little bit oh. because uh, then the tension is different. Yeah. So it's like it's like playing here, but if yeah. I'm playing here, I can. Oh, that's clever. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but, but also, that, that affects the tone. Of well. course, it, yeah. of course it does. But yeah. you know, it helps me as a player because I play a little better. Yeah. Oh. So that's a little trick, dude. That was great. Thank you so much. All of these exercises will be in the description of this video. And uh, thank you for uh, this short little session. Go follow John. Uh, he has guitar techniques on Instagram. He also has yes. a Patreon with uh, ten-minute guitar challenges that are really excellent. I'll put some links in the description of this video. You can go uh, check him out, and he can become your teacher, basically. Yes. And okay. he's an excellent guy. Oh, for that. Thank you. <laughs> See you. <ya. laughs> bye bye.